Hello, good people, and welcome you once again to this very interesting episode. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your location. Please, if you're joining me for the very first time, please don't forget to share and like this video and follow our media handles. God bless you. It is already over, my people, for Alaji Atiku Abubaka. Alaji Atiku Abubaka has lost out in this presidential race. In the last video where I published, where Obasanjo reviewed why Atiku should not be voted, where he enlisted all the companies he sold out during the era of privatization. Now, his media, ex-media aide, Mr. Michael, has already broken the camel's back. He has exposed a leaked video of conversation, of corruption conversation between himself and Alaji Atiku Abubakar. I don't want to talk too much. Let's listen to the video first of all. My name is Michael Atimugu, former media aide and facilitator to Alhaji Atiku Abubakar. I'm here to issue a very firm note of warning to his spokespersons and aides. I was there before some of you, and I'm more competent and meticulous than the most of you. This series is a battle for the redemption of the soul of Nigeria. It's nothing personal. And this is why, out of respect for the cordial relationship I used to have with His Excellency, I am holding and will continue to hold back evidences that are capable of tearing the very fabric of this nation. Things that the Wazir himself has said, plans that he has had that will be detrimental to the well-being of Nigerians. I'll hold back most of those things and only speak to Nigerians about the things that can guide them, help them understand why they should not vote for Atiku for, the, for president of Nigeria. If any one of you, however, comes at me, defames my character, then there will be the greatest unleashing of evidence Nigeria has ever witnessed since 1960. Of course, I know that the attempt will be made on my life. You can kill me, it's all, all good, but Nigeria is more important than one person, than this individual. And this is why my lawyers have been well briefed. In the event of my, of my death, if anything touches the strand of hair on my body, then my lawyers will unleash everything in my arsenal. Do not aggravate issues for Atiku by aggravating me. I have thought about this long and hard before I decided to speak up. I've been silent for a long time, but I have children. All of my viewers have children. You have families that will be affected if you make the wrong choice in 2023. In all good conscience, I will not sit back and let this happen without speaking about what I know. I will once again say to Nigerians that as you watch and listen to the sequels to this first episode, make decisions that will be good for you, your family, and the future of this country. Alhaji Atiku Abaka is not that person to vote for. And I say this because I know it. Thank you. 18th of June 2018, there were serious corruption allegations lying all over social media about the 100 million naira bribe that had been given to Atiku Abaka by the then Lato State Governor Joshua Dari. Um, by the direct personal admission of the, of the governor, he had given uh, a hundred million naira to Atip. For this reason, the governor was found guilty of sentenced to jail time. Um, I needed to know how to, what the truth about the allegation was before proceeding um, to plan a defense strategy. And so I reached out to my then principal, Atip Abaka, via email, asking him you know, the details of the issue and how to proceed. So he had told me that in his reply that, you know, um, they had, that money had been paid into an SPV. I didn't know what an SPV was, so I asked him. And so he, he, he gave a brief description, but since it was obvious, I wasn't quite, um, I didn't have clarity to put the call through to me that same day. On my blog, you find the phone number that he had used to call me on that day, and the number I was also using, by which I had received that call that day. And in his call, in our conversation, he admitted to having advised his then boss, President Ulu Shekun Basonjo, against what he called open corruption, um, stating that he practiced corruption by stealth or corruption by SPV, um, if you will. Went on to explain in uh, further strategy meetings 
that through those experiences, he and Tipu Abaka had set up not the way that he was in charge of the economy. Every money, every monetary transaction had to pass through him, you know, and he, they, they had to use those SPVs, you know, to fleece uh, uh, the, you know, Nigeria, to bring those money for private businesses, you know, to settle their friends on um, political issues as well. Um, that particular conversation um, gave me a little insight into the truth about my boss, my then boss, and all of the you know corruption allegations against him. It also opened my mind to the uh, knowledge that the reason he's always been confident in defending himself, you know, in allegations of SPV by telling Nigerians, "Show me evidence if you have any against me," is because. SPV, those companies that set up by himself had placeholder directors. So nothing could ever be traced back to him directly. That's why Atik is always confident about corruption allegations. It also forced me to begin to investigate deeper, you know, the man that I had I was serving at the time. Yes, sir. <laughs> How can you ask me what is this theory? Uh, well, um, I don't know what this theory is, and I, I, I need to be sure before I start arguing uh, with these people. Yeah, the SPV is a special purpose vehicle. In other words, it's a, it's a company they incorporate to carry out certain you know, activities. Okay, sir. You see, you see what happened or when we came into you know, the office and I advised the president against, you know, you know, uh, like, you know, open corruption. Yes, sir. I told, I told him, I, I said, give me three people you trust. Yes, sir. And I will prepare three companies for which they will be the subscribers or rather the directors. Okay, sir. So that, you know, like, if there is any contract that we give, you know, they will act like consultants, you yeah, know, yeah. and then they are giving a fee. Yeah. And that fee is what we now use, you know, to fund the party yeah. instead of, you know, engaging open. So he gave me the names of Fashawe, uh, Andy Uba, the late, uh, uh, this guy, you know, from the last day, who died in that plane crash. Um, trying to retrieve them. Okay. So I now incorporated companies and I put them in subscribers. Yes. And one of the companies was Mali Fruits. Yes, so when uh, this government sent a donation to the party, now he sent it to Mali Fruits. So it was paid it to Mali Fruits. Yes, sir. You know. And the guy, one of the subscribers of Marine Float was uh, Papa said, You know, that, that account was very to bad when investigated by the NCT. So, you know, you know, there was any reason. They found out that there was nothing. You know. yes, so, that was where the one had been. He went to it. He did not go to a chief of soccer. He went to. Marine Float. The Marine Pool Float was an SPV, special purpose vehicle, created, you know, as uh, a consulting company. So, okay, so that was the way I had with it. Okay, so. Yes, so uh, that was what I really tried to explain to you because no money was given to a Chico Abubaka. <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> You know, this week, as, the, as the time draws closer, they keep coming up with a lot of um, issues, and one one needs to be able to have a few facts to to be countering yeah. them immediately, immediately. Mm. Yes, sir. No problem, sir. I will tackle him later tonight. So, I mean, they should go and check. The money was not paid to a but the money was paid to a company called Marine Flow. Marine Flow, yes, sir. Yes, I'm sorry. Marine Float is one of those three companies. Yes, sir. He did categorically that you own Marine Float. I never, there is no way I can own Marine Float. 